I am stopping here at the Granite Falls Historical Museum before the dogs and I take a hike on the Mountain Loop Highway. I'm hoping to see some pictures of the place that we're going, how it used to look, and also maybe get a little more information about the area in general. This pick is from the Everett and Monte Cristo Railway. It's pretty cool. That would have been going through Rope Canyon. I thought the Granite Falls Museum was definitely worthy of a visit. If you can't make it though, apparently they scan in all of their photos, so you should be able to view those from your home. These are the sort of pictures I was looking for. I'm not sure if they were actually right in the canyon. That's where we're going to be walking, right along there. You will not recognize it at all from this picture. All right, I just left the museum. I didn't get to talk to the person who knows a lot of the history because they were busy talking to somebody else the entire time I was in there, but we are now going to hike down into the Robe Canyon on this beautiful, look at misty fall day and take a look at what the canyon looks like now. Beautiful. Dripping moss, golden fall leaves here and there. And hardly anyone out here. I'm getting a really late start because the museum in Granite Falls doesn't open until noon. It's now just after 1.30. Do not go past the trail sign at mile 1.1. Very dangerous to unleash dogs. This trail is the opposite of how I like my trails. You start out fresh and full of energy, going down, down, down these switchbacks, and then when you're all tired, you get to come up the switchbacks. But it is a pretty short trail, so I'm not too punishing, and it is just beautiful today. We're just kind of in this cloud. It's just the perfect October hiking day. Not too cold, definitely not warm. Loving it. There's Salal and Oregon grape and huckleberries. No huckleberries left on these. And then the leaves we're seeing here mostly are big leaf maples. down in some vine maples, but I'm not seeing a lot of reds, just a lot of kind of pale golds here now. At the bend in the first, pretty much the first switchback, if you go past, there's like a social trail here, and you can see there's an old abandoned car over here we'll go check out. I don't know what the story on this car is, but it sure is a long ways from any road that exists today. down here where it's flat. This would have been probably the beginning of the bustling community that formed around the rail line. Thanks Frodo for always jingling in my videos. spot there, kind of a marshy area. So 
want to check that log out. All right. I'm at 0.82 miles in, and I'm just now coming up on the Stillaguamish River. So where we're standing and walking here would have been a bustling community with a railway station and a school and homes. Hard to imagine. We will see some um, remains of the community, but not a lot. Mostly it is just a beautiful river embankment now. I wish there were signs here and there that said, you know, this is where the barber shop was or whatever. I mean, I don't even know that there was a barber shop. But man, that's a big spruce. Look at that. Point nine nine, and we have a tree across the trail here. It looks like. The dogs can go under and I can go over. I'm not crawling through those sticks. Okay, go ahead guys. I'll meet you on the other side. Frodo, good job. Wait for me. Good girl, Luna. Frodo, wait. stepped off the path a little to come look at this wetland area. You can see cattails growing up in it. I wonder if this was filled in when this was a town and railway or if there was always this marsh here and it was just alongside the town. Okay, slippery logs. Hopefully I won't slip because I forgot my Garmin and there is no signal here. Yes, I am an idiot. You can see a whole bunch of different little artifacts from whatever was here before in relation to the town, the logging, or the railroad. This is what I was looking for. Here's where the brick comes from. Some kind of a low wall. It was maybe once a dam or something or a foundation. And this is just on the other side of that big log we just stepped over. <laughs> Dogs are interested in different things. This is like, besides the uh, railroad track itself, there's bits of that left too, I think. That's about the only thing that remains of this settlement. Let's keep going. I'm actually showing 1.17 in, but I'm pretty sure there's a sign at the end where it says that it's not recommended to go past this point. And actually I've seen video from people that have. I think there's some tunnels, but it's, I think, kind of dangerous. So not something I want to do alone and not something I want the dogs to do. So, that's a double no for me today. Slippery logs. Whoa, good jump. <laughs> you gonna do it twice? <laughs>
So we are right in between the Stiliguamish and this bank. So I think right here, all that would have been is the actual railway itself that ran from Monte Cristo into Everett. In fact, you can see where the bank's built up there. Oops, I can see. Let me tip it right. See, it's man-made built up there. I'm gonna check that out more. Look at that, wow. You can see how the bank is built up here. There's a rock wall. Dogs are straining to get ahead here. And there's some rebar here in the trail. So be careful where you step. Just like right in the trail. Especially right now with the leaves covering some of them. God, that's beautiful. I was hiking here in the winter once along this stretch of the trail somewhere and it was snowing really heavily and a tree from somewhere up there just like cracked like an explosion and flung itself off the embankment and then whooped down really, really hard. It was jutting out over the river, kind of right in between where we had just stopped to talk to somebody um, and they had gone one way and we had gone the other. It was, uh, we all went back and looked at it and we were pretty quiet. <laughs> it was pretty sobering, like amazing how fast a tree can one minute be standing and the next minute just have crushed itself right across the trail. So close. Okay, I don't know how obvious it is with the leaves, but Frodo, thank you for stepping in my way here. These are railroad ties. You can see these beams across the way. Big old seeping rock on the side of the trail here. We're gonna go up over this little hill and then you'll be able to see our end point here. I think, yep, see the signs? That's where our turnaround is. Let's go to there. There's an actual waterfall here. How pretty is that? All right, I am showing 1.33. Slides in unsafe conditions have closed the trail beyond. And if I ever do go that way, I guess I won't film it because it says trespassers will be uh, sighted. So you can see that obviously this trail gets really brushy and narrow. And then you can also see that the railway line continues along the edge of the river here. And uh, boy, the leaves sure are pretty down there. And just around the bend, I think, there is a um, tunnel. And that also is dangerous, like the tunnels are not being maintained structurally at all. So definitely a hazard, but what a pretty turnaround point. Probably won't feel much on the way back, but Frodo just found this collapsed wasp nest. Must have fallen from below. Oh shit, there's still life in there. Damn. Well, I'm glad they didn't come out and get me. They're looking kind of sluggish. Sorry wasps, your time is over. Well, my face is really red from climbing up the switchbacks. That was 2.63 miles round trip. And the elevation gain was, I think it was 283, 200, right around 280 feet, all at the end. <laughs> it was a beautiful hike. I had it completely to myself. I passed three people before I even hit the switchbacks. And then um, one person as I was hitting the very last switchback, actually. So um, just a really, really peaceful hike. It was, you know, moody and misty, but it didn't actually rain on us. The fall colors are still really pretty out here, and the river is gorgeous. It was a really fun day.